More than 50 years ago, a group of Pittsburgh men and women started the very first ambulance service in the entire country. They paved the way for today's frontline health care workers. Now the group is making a comeback, and as Andy Sheehan explains, they are providing new and amazing opportunities. Time was, if you were sick or injured in the Hill District, you had to find a way to the hospital on your own. At that time, back in the 60s, uh, you couldn't get a cab. Uh, a private ambulance service uh, oftentimes uh, would not come into a, a black neighborhood. But out of racial inequality came life-saving innovation with the birth of Freedom House Ambulance, the nation's first emergency medical service. John Moon was one of 25 original members trained off the street to not only transport patients, but administer vital care en route when every second counts. CPR, which was the invent, shortly invented around that time, they were intubating patients, um, providing medications in the field. It was something that was unheard of at the time. Freedom House set a, the groundwork for every single thing that goes on in the EMS today and being a part of that uh, gives me an immensely amount of joy and happiness. The ambulance service is long gone. <laughs> Taken over and assumed into what has become Pittsburgh's EMS. We have the heart, we have the blood, and we have the blood vessels. But five decades later, its legacy is continuing here at Freedom House 2.0. Like those original members, these young, mostly African-American students are finding a new calling, learning the workings of the cardiovascular system, training to become emergency medical technicians. Just to be able to learn more about the body, how it works, um, to, to give me the opportunity to be even better for my community, um, you know, going, going a step above and saving lives and um, just, just being another protector, it's... it's um, it's very inspiring. Freedom House 2.0 is a tribute to the original Freedom House. Sponsored by the Neighborhood Resilience Project, Partner for Work, and UPMC, the 10-week course will certify each of these students as EMTs, patient care technicians, and community health care workers or health care technicians. Each is guaranteed job interviews with UPMC for placement. So they automatically qualify for four jobs just by taking this training. If she lands one of those jobs, Desiree Owens in Freedom House will have come full circle. Her grandmother, Doris Owens, was one of the original members of the ambulance service, and Desiree is grateful for the opportunity to follow her. I always wanted to be a paramedic EMT, but I had barriers. Teenage mom as a child, so had to focus on that. Got my children up. That put me back, but now it's my time to go and focus on my career and what I want to do. I had an opportunity to meet the first class and I was very well impressed uh, with them. John Moon went on to a distinguished career in emergency medicine, retiring as an assistant chief in Pittsburgh EMS. But a half century after the birth of Freedom House, he still sees inequity in health care and the need for programs like this to address it. It's an opportunity to create diversity um, in pre-hospital care. Uh, unfortunately, there's a lack of diversity in EMS uh, throughout not only Pittsburgh, but throughout the country. And at least some of these students will likely be getting jobs with Pittsburgh EMS, which is proudly putting the Freedom House Ambulance seal on all of its new ambulances, carrying on this very rich tradition. Reporting in the Strip District, Andy Sheehan, KDK News.